Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titanic Games, and today I'm going to be showing you how to uh, continue off of the previous tutorial we did with the jetpack and show you how to connect it to a kind of fuel system. And um, in this video, I'm specifically going to show you how you can do it with kind of some um, automatic regeneration. In the next video, I'll show you how to do it with kind of some fuel pickups, right? So um, you'll have to pick up fuel to be able to regenerate, um, but this one will just be automatic regeneration. So uh, with that, let's get right to it. Now, we're going to want to open up our, our uh, character blueprint. And if you've been following along, you'll notice, you know, a lot of this will be familiar. Um, so let's just get right to it because it's a little bit too, it's, um, it's kind of a, kind of a long tutorial. So, uh, first things first, let's delete, uh, this event, right? We're not going to need this one anymore. Instead, what we're going to do is off of activate. Um, well, I guess we're still going to need the, t the timer. So we'll do set timer by event. Um, but this time we're going to drag off, say custom event, and we're going to call this deplete, um, Deplete fuel, all right, just like that. And for the amount of time here, we're just going to set it to 0.05, and we're going to set it to looping. Now, the reason I'm having it run so, um, having the timer, the time be so low, is because it'll allow the fuel bar to have much smoother transitions rather than uh, subtracting large amounts at once. So um, you'll see what I mean in a little bit. All right. So next thing we want to do is we want to add a couple variables that will. Um, represent our fuel. So let's add one called current fuel, add another called max fuel, and let's also add some more for depleting and regenerating. So this will be depletion rate, uh, and this will be regen rate, and let's compile and save. Now we can add some default values. So our default fuel, let's make it 100. Max fuel, also 100. Depletion rate, I'm just going to set it to one uh, because we are subtracting. Um, sub we'll be subtracting one every 0 0.05 seconds. That means you know every um, every second it'll subtract 20 fuel. Um, but you know you can play around with the values. It doesn't matter. Uh, so now for regenerate, I'm also going to set it to one. So we'll regenerate 20 fuel per second as well. All right. So we've got all our variables prepared. Now we can uh, start scripting the function for or the, yeah the event. Uh, first thing we're going to want to do is drag off and we want to set our current fuel. And what we want to set it to is our current fuel minus the depletion rate. Okay, so let's get our depletion rate, drag it, drop it on, it'll automatically attach for you, and then hook up the return value to current fuel. Now, what that's doing is every 0 0.05 seconds, it's going to subtract one and then um, you know, set the value. Okay, so now from there, what we need to do is we need to check if we have no fuel, right? Because if we have no fuel, then we're going to want to, um, you know, s stop our movement or stop flying, basically. So to do that, we're going to drag off and do a branch, and this allows us to, you know, do a basic if statement and check if something is true or not. Then from this return value here, we want to drag off and say, is this um, less than or equal to zero. All right, so if it is, then we want to stop flying or stop our jetpack. So to do that really simply, let's take, um, we're going to take everything from the released, copy it, so Control-C, and then Control-V to paste it. And then we'll just hook that up to um, the movement mode and or hook it up to off of true. And then that'll be it for uh, for right now. Now the next thing we want to do is we also want to you know start regenerating once we release. So we're going to do a very similar thing. We're going to take uh, take our set timer by event. I'm going to control uh, W to duplicate. Drag off of deactivate. Hook it up. Um, I'm just going to create a little more space here. And now instead of uh, instead of depleting, we're going to want to regenerate. So we'll take drag off of this and we'll say. Um, custom event, oops, custom event, and we'll say regen fuel. Very simple. And now we're literally going to do the same exact thing except in the opposite order. All right, first we want to check if, um, we want to check if our current fuel is 
um, greater than or equal to our um, our max fuel. And now the reason for that is, um, you know, if if we have uh, if our current fuel is equal to our max fuel, then we don't want to add any more fuel, right? So next, we're going to drag off of, um, well, first, let's drag off of false, right? So we're assuming that we don't have any fuel, or we have less than the max fuel. So from there, we want to set our current fuel. And we want to set that to um, current fuel plus our regen rate, okay? So we'll drag current fuel, get it, say plus, float plus float hook that up, drag in regenerate, connect it, and there we go. So we've got our two, you know, uh, I guess timers working. Now, the problem is that um, once we release, you know, this timer hasn't stopped. Like, it will continue going on and on. And um, the same thing will happen when um, you release and then press it again, right? This one won't stop. So they'll constantly be competing. So what we need to do is we need to uh, have a way to invalidate them or like cancel them out. So for this top one, right, off of, you know, pressed, following the pressed line, we want to drag off of the return value and say clear and invalidate timer by handle. Now it's automatically going to hook up the execute pin, but we don't want that. So hold alt and click to break it and then just hook up deactivate to it. Now that will clear this one once we run out of um, fuel. So now we're going to do the same thing here, um, except once we have enough fuel, right? we want to clear and invalidate the timer and connect true to it, just like that. Now another thing we need to address is that both of these are going to be um, competing with each other um, if you press it and then release it before you've ran out of fuel. So what we need to do then is take these, um, control W right here, control W right here to duplicate them, and then just hook this up and we need to do, uh, oh, and hook that one up. And then we need to do kind of a crisscross, right? Both of these will go into the opposite. And this just ensures that the timers aren't competing anymore. All right, now the last thing we need to do is we need to add one more timer um, after uh, we after we stop flying to kind of simulate um, this uh, this released event happening because you could the players could still be pressing it um, but we want to start regenerating um, the regenerating the fuel while they're not pressing it it kind of it kind of simulates um, canceling out the input uh, but there's no real easy way in blueprints to do that so. Um, so what we're going to do with, did I select it? Yep, with the set timer by event selected, control W to duplicate it, hook this up. And then since we already made the event for regen health, we can actually drag off of the event node here, hook it up right there, and it'll automatically play that for us. So now the last thing we need to do is we need to have a way to invalidate this timer as well. So to do that, drag off and again, clear and invalidate timer by handle break that pin, and we're going to want to hook up this bottom one to it, just like that. All right, uh, control W up here now, um, because we want to do the same thing for the top one. So hook up this clear and invalidate to that one. All right, so now our system should be working. And I'll just give a little quick play test here. So if I hold F, you know, I fly up, and then when I run out, eventually, um, you know, I can't fly as long, right? So it starts regenerating, and now I won't be able to fly as long, right? So you start running out of fuel sooner, you know, you can't fly as long. So um, you can see it's working. How am I doing on time? Okay, so now I'll show you how to hook it up to a um, kind of a HUD, uh, you know, fuel bar really quick. Uh, okay, so in our content browser, let's go, let's right click, and let's create, um, I'll scroll down to user interface, okay? and then go from the drop down and choose widget blueprint. Now let's call this our fuel HUD. So open that up and you'll see we just have a blank canvas panel right now. That's all we have. Um, now this isn't a lesson on UI design so I'm just simply going to take a progress bar, drag it and drop it on the canvas panel and then we can resize it you know, a little bit, position it. Um, 
you know, some cool things you could do. You could add like some, you know, like a jetpack image and like, you know, have the image be there and then it refills from the top kind of thing. Um, you know, you can do some really cool stuff with it. So, but yeah, for this tutorial, we're just gonna have a, you know, basic bar. All right, so with our bar created, what we're gonna wanna do now is we want to um, see this percent value. This is what, uh, you know, increases the, um, the fill of the bar. Um, so in, rather than manually doing this, we want to create a binding for it. So we want some kind of variables to determine uh, what the percentage should be. So to do that, let's click bind, create binding, and this will create something that says get percent, right? Now I'll drag out here um, just to create some space for us to work in. All right, compile and save. And now we need a way to get a reference to um, these fuel variables from our third person character. So to do that, go into your fuel HUD, to your event graph, uh, get rid of that tick. And now we're gonna drag off of event construct, which functions in a very similar way to event begin play. Um, whenever the HUD, you know, the, the, this HUD is created, it will fire this event. So we're going to um, cast to third person character. And then for object, we're going to get player character. Oops character just like that and then from here we want to right click on the as and promote it to variable and we'll just call this a character reference um, because that's all it really is it's just going to be a reference um, that we can use in other parts of the graph all right so now go back to our get percent function and drag in our character reference variable so get it and then from here we can drag off and say get current uh, fuel so we can get our current fuel, and then we can get our max fuel. And the reason we need to do this is because um, percentage is from a, is, uh, a value from zero to one. So we need to convert um, our non zero to one numbers to a zero to one uh, kind of scale. So to do that, all you have to do is you take your current divided by your max, and then no matter what these values are, it will always return a value between 0 and 1. All right, so now connect that in just like that. Compile and save. And now the very last thing we need to do, uh, we can exit out of this, is in our event graph of the um, third person character, find some open space and type in or, uh, event begin play. So now we need to, what we're doing here is we're creating the HUD, the, um, you know, the fuel HUD so that we can actually see it on the screen. So drag off and say create widget because we're you know creating the widget the HUD widget um, and then for class we can find our fuel HUD and then from there all we have to do is add to viewport and now compile and save if we press play there it is in the top left you can see it if I press F to start flying you can see there's my fuel bar See, and I can start running out of it. Um, you know, and um, this will help the players themselves, you know, manage it better as well. But here I am if I'm flying really crazily. Woo. So you can see it's it's working pretty nice now. Um, and when I run out, you know, it stops and then it regenerates on its own. And then I have to press it again to start flying again. Alright. So that's kind of the basics of that, um, of setting up the you know, the fuel to be hooked up to a HUD. Um, in the next tutorial, I'll show you how you can do it with a fuel pickup instead. Um, if you want your game to, you know, have pickups, then you can use that. Uh, so thank you for watching. If you like the video and want to see more, you know, like, subscribe, whatever, um, and I will see you in the next one.